In this video, we are going to create a simple rain effect for a 2D top-down game using the Unity's particle system. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. The rain effect will be comprised of two separate particle systems. First one will be the drops that are falling at an angle and the second one will be the ripples that will appear on the ground on top of different objects in our game. While there is no connection between where the ripples show and where the droplets fall, I think that the end result looks pretty nice. Okay, so let's start working on our rain effect. So first thing that we need to do is create particle system. So in the hierarchy of our project, let's select this plus icon, let's select effects and let's select particle system and this will be our rain drops now you may not see them uh, depending on the tiling in your game this is because they are rendered behind our 2d environment so to fix that we need to select the raindrops particle system and go to the inspector i'm going to first reset their position and next i'm going to select the particle system component now, if you see multiple of those tabs here, you can simply go to the plus icon and at the bottom there is show all modules. I have this disabled because we need to find the render module. And here at the bottom, we have an option to select sorting layer ID. Now I have prepared a weather sorting layer that it appears above everything else in my game. That's why all the particles now in the scene view will show on top of everything else. If you need to, you can select the sorting layer ID and select the button at the bottom of this list to add an extra layer that will be rendered on top of everything else. Great. Now let's make those look more like raindrops and less like squares. In the rendering tab in the inspector, let's change the render mode from billboard to stretch billboard. And I'm going to change the speed scale to be 0.06 or something like that. Basically, what it does is changes the st how stretched the billboard is based on the speed with which the particle is moving. So now in the preview, you should already see that the particles looks a bit different. Now to show it, we are going to select the raindrops tab at the top of the particle system component. And let's select the start speed and let's set it to be something like 500. And as you can see now, the, in the scene view, you should see those particles being stretched. Now we want to set the speed to be something like 25 so let's do that in the inspector and instead we want to select the start size that is a bit below and we are going to change it from 1 to 0.1 and now in the scene view you should see the preview of the particles being thin and long so that's basically what we want now we need to make them to appear like they are dropping from the top towards the bottom of the screen so first thing that we need to do is find the tab called shape this should be added by default and at the top we are going to select the shape and we are going to select at the bottom the rectangular shape in the scene view the preview will change to be a rectangle but now we have no more particles this is because if we change in the scene view to view the 3d view you can see that those particles are going towards the screens they are flying towards the z-axis so let's turn back on the 2d mode and we need to rotate them so let's again go to the shape tab in the inspector and we want to select the uh, rotation on the x-axis and we are going to change it to be 90. So now you should see that the square has been rotated and now the particles are flying towards the bottom of the screen. So next thing is we need to stretch this rectangle so that the particles can fly uh, across all the area of our map. So we are going to select the red shape uh, tab in the particle system in the inspector, select the scale, and in my case, I'm going to set the X scale to be 20. So now the, in the inspector, we should see that the rectangle is longer. But if again, I go to the 3D view, you can see that now it is stretched in the Z axis. So we are going to select the scale of the shape on the Y, and we are going to set it to be zero. So now this will be just a line from which the particles will be spawned. Let me turn back on the 2D view and this is our, this, those are our raindrops but they are currently falling towards the bottom and I want them to be falling at an angle. To make it so, we are going to select the particles tab and transform of the object 
and we are going to select the rotation on the z axis and we can set it to be something like minus 30. Now you should see that the rectangle that was spawning the particles is rotated and the particles are appearing at an angle. Let's select the move tool in the scene view and let's move them above our player because we need to place this rectangle that is spawning our raindrops above the player, above what camera sees so that those raindrops appear in our game view in the correct position and from the correct uh, position they are starting. Okay, so now to polish this effect a bit, we are going to again select our raindrops and expand the particle system component. And let's select the raindrops general tab. And in the start lifetime, we are going to select this drop down uh, on the right. And we are going to select random between two constants. And I want to set my start lifetime between 0 0.5 and 1 so that the rain droplets will disappear either in the middle of the screen or they will fly towards the end of the screen. This will be depending on the uh, size of your camera. So make sure that you tweak it based on your own game. Great. Now, what I want to do is drag this raindrops to be a child of my player agent. So the uh, player that is moving around the map and the object basically that is followed by the camera so that the raindrops only appear near the player and not across the entire map. I'm going to drag my raindrops to be the child of my agent object. But before we can press play, we need to change one more setting in the inspector. Right now in the raindrops in the particle component, uh, we are going to see in the middle somewhere that the simulation space is local, meaning that when we move our player, the raindrops will be moved with us. And we want to change this local to be world space, so the particles will only originate near the player, but they will be falling independently from the player movement. Okay, so with this all done, let's try pressing play. Okay, so when we press play, the raindrop starts falling down and we can move and the raindrops are moving independently from our movement of the player, but they are spawned near the player, so it appears like they are falling all around the world, but this is just a simple trick to, uh, for the performance reasons to just keep them spawning around the player and not across the entire map. Okay, let's stop the game. Great. Now we need to create another particle system for our uh, rain ripples. So let's select the current particle system and we can either right click and I think there is the duplicate button or we can control D to duplicate them. And I'm going to change the name of it to be rain ripples. Okay. We can save those as the prefabs, but for now I will just drag them near each other. Now they look exactly the same as our raindrops and before we can start tweaking the look of the particles, uh, we are going to create a new material. So let's go to the project tab, right click, and we are going to create a new material. And we are going to call this ripple material. And when we select it in the inspector at the top, we need to select the shader. I'm using universal render pipeline, so I will search here for the particle shader. And I'm going to select only shader so it is unaffected by the light in my game. Obviously, if you want to, you can select the lit shader. But the most important part is that I have prepared the sprite sheet of the rain ripples uh, in a pixel art form that will appear and this should be animated when we spawn our ripples. So those are four frames of my animation. You can access them by going to my Patreon page. The link will be in the description. You can download this sprite sheet for free. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like and consider supporting the channel by either clicking the thanks button down below or becoming a Patreon. The link will be in the description. Thanks a lot. So when you grab the sprite sheet, we need to select our material, our ripple material, and we need to drag the rain the droplets. By the way, they are set to be the pixel per unit is 16. There are texture type sprite and we have used filter mode pixel because this is the pixel art. We can also disable the compression. Now, when we have this preset, we need to select our material and we are going to drag this rain ripples sprite sheet to be the input of the base map of this material. Okay, and last thing that we need to do is at the top, we need to select the surface type to be transparent so that we can see those ripples appearing in the preview of the material here at the bottom. Okay, great. When we are done, we need to select back our rain ripples particle system and we need to find the render, the render tab. Here we are going to assign the material to be our ripples 
material and not the default one. Okay, so now in our preview we should see our ripples being uh, represented as our new material. So we need to select the render mode and let's reset it to be the billboard. And next we need to add a new module to our ripples. Just click this plus icon and select this texture sheet animation. And it should appear as a separate tab in our particle system component. Here we can define how long, uh, how many frames has our animation or our sprite sheet. I'm going to set the texture sprite sheet animation tiles on X. I'm going to set it to be four. And we can also change the start frame. For me, it is frame zero. And now the time mode is lifetime. So in the main tab of our particle system, the start lifetime of our particle system will simply be the time that the animation will take to animate through all the frames. So we are going to change the start size to be one. We are going to check the start uh, lifetime and uh, from the random between two constants to be a constant of one. I'm going to reset the start speed to be zero. Now in the scene view, you should see that on this line that we have created as a shape for our previous particle system, we are seeing the ripples appearing and this is our animation. Now I will set the uh, start size to be something lower, so 0 0.8 or 0 0.7, because I want those ripples to be a bit smaller for my game. But again, all the parameters are here for you to tweak depending on your game, okay? So now obviously we do not want to, those particles to appear at the line at the top of our screen. We want to change the shape of the particle uh, so that they can appear across the map near our player. So let's select our particle system in the inspector. Let's select the shape and we are going to select the rectangle, but we do not want to have any rotation. So at the top, we are going to reset the transform the rotation on Z to be zero. Next, we are going to change the rotation on X to be zero and we are going to select the scale. And for me on X, it will be 18 and on uh, Y, it will be about 15. And now in the scene view, I should see that I have this big square that uh, where are my ripples are appearing and I want this to be placed. I'm going to use the move tool near my player so that the player is in the center and the ripples are appearing around the player. Great. Now I'm going to modify one more parameter of my particle system, which is the emission. I want the emission rate over time to be 20 to make more ripples appear on the ground. Now again, if you want the animation to play faster, you need to select the rain ripples and decrease the start lifetime to be 0.5. Now the ripples will be uh, shorter and the animation will go quicker. If you are happy with the result, make sure that the rain ripples particle system is a part of your agent, is a child of your agent or your player so that they will follow your player. And the simulation space is set to world already because we have duplicated the particles so they will stay in place while the, while the player is moving. So if we select both of those systems, we can now see the ripples and the raindrops appearing together. Now one issue is that the ripples will appear on top of your player when you are moving. So there might be a bit more to set up here to make this look better. But for now, I think this looks decent enough. One more thing that we can modify is for the raindrops, we can select in the particle system the start color and we can change the uh, transparency, so alpha, to be something lower so that those raindrops are not covering the screen that much because they are a bit more transparent now. So if I press play, you should now see both effects uh, working in our game. Now, again, the ripples will appear on top of the player, but uh, again, you can pick this to work a bit better. But overall, I think this effect looks pretty good for a 2D top-down game uh, if you need to have rain effect in it. If you want to learn more about making games in Unity, check out my video courses. The link will be in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.